All right, boys, here we go, starting off our uh, first guide for Project Zomboid. I play this game all the time, and frankly, I spend so much time on it with friends, family, goofy people that I meet online, that if I didn't start putting it on the channel, it would just be a huge waste of time. You guys would be waiting for Dominion's videos or similar things way longer in between. So I'm going to do a quick tutorial to get beginners into this game, so hopefully some of you guys join me. Let me know in the comments if you guys join Project Zomboid, and I'll be happy to host a server every once in a while, let us all play together, goof around. I wanted to go over settings first, because I I feel like a lot of new players don't know what settings to go with don't this is a lot of settings to deal with so i just wanted to go through let you all kind of glance at my settings and under aim outline under cursor you're for in the first tab display under cursor aim outline you need to change this to any weapon normally what happens is it's on ranged weapons and when you're aiming at zombies you get like a faint colored outline around the zombies that indicates when you're aiming at a zombie or which one you're aiming at you want this for melee weapons as well because then it shows you when they're in range to hit and it's a huge help to any new player other than than that um i have a couple options like show mod info and item tooltip there are a couple other things on here that i do but most of this stuff i'll just like quickly rip through i turn up the font size because otherwise i can't see the darn little settings that i have in the game it's very difficult to see for some people um door shaking on hit make sure that's on because anytime you're hearing a zombie beating on a door you want to see which door it is you know which door they're behind so you don't open the wrong door and surprise yourself other than that i can't think of too much in terms of specificity i mean there's always options like leave key and ignition drink water when thirsty make sure that's on good lord that would be annoying resume normal speed when timed actions complete that's for a single player i play on multiplayer exclusively unless i'm doing a specific video like this but i play on multiplayer exclusively this is mods ignore this this is all believe me you'll get into mods but that's that brings me to my next tip is do not play with mods until you are familiar with the basics trust me mods are wonderful you can see i have a whole ton of mods here feel free and go slow through the video to see every mod that i have and what one I play with but when I'm doing this quick little how to get started on Project Zomboid I'm going to be playing completely vanilla with no mods so let's go start off a solo game also keep in mind what I'm doing here in solo as a new player what you can do instead is you click on host you come in here and you create new settings server test sure you can choose every sandbox setting you could imagine for the game here and set it up to your liking and that way you could just play completely solo and then if you ever have a friend that joins the game you don't have to restart every Everything. in case you don't like to restart you can actually just invite your friend to your multiplayer server that way you're not trapped in solo because once you click on solo you can never invite anybody to play with you so I'm going to like I said remove all the mods this is gonna take a second all right here we go now I'm doing this on apocalypse you should not if it is your first game play on builder to figure out exactly how the game works and then after that skip straight to apocalypse because there are very distinct differences between apocalypse and survival survivor and if you choose to do survivor and then you switch to apocalypse I believe survivor lets melee weapons hit multiple people in one swing you don't want to get used to that because you really want to get used to the apocalypse settings that in my experience most multiplayer servers go with which each weapon hits one zombie at a time so you play apocalypse after you've gotten comfortable with how the game works in general with builder now when we're in the game I'm gonna show you guys a couple of tips probably somewhere around seven or eight tips but I've already given you two do not play with mods that's the number one don't play with mods until you understand what the mods are for and then the next tip will come during character creation um, Muldrow is the city in Project Zomboid that they first designed. This was the city that's been around the longest, so it's the most fleshed out. It's a very good city to start in, kind of middle of the road. Riverside's kind of a fishing town. It's very wide open and expansive, a little difficult to get used to until you know where you're at. Rosewood's by far the easiest. This is where you should certainly start if you're looking for an easier time because it has a fire department and a police department right next to each other, kind of a small town, less zombie population. West Point is the hardest, supposedly. It is close to Louisville, it is loaded with zombies, and it's it is very 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 busy that being said I'm gonna do Muldrow because that's the one that the game developers have worked on the longest and so I like showing what to do in Muldrow because it has a good combination of speed and everything else so my next tip comes in the form of character creation until you actually know what you are doing make sure these two stats they both start at a five fitness and strength are high on your character every time I'm talking a nine or a ten because your character every single thing they do is modified by these two stats pushing fighting carrying capacity that's all strength movement endurance fatigue that's all fitness including speed so do not lower these 
a lot of people like to do the zero to hero thing where they, you know, pick some horrible, debilitating, like unfit, obese, you know, characters and they run around and they just go, oh, I can build up strength and fitness. Well, let me tell you, these stats will take you longer than any skill in the game to raise besides maybe nimble, but we'll get to that detail later. I just want you guys to know, start with a nine or a 10 in fitness and strength. The lowest I would go is eight, but at nine and 10, you get these extra bonuses that make you really good. Fitness gives you more attack speed with weapons, which really helps when you're first figuring out timing. Strength gives you a lot of help with carrying capacity because I promise you the first couple times you die will probably be because you're overburdened and you fatigue yourself out. So let's do a very basic build, something very straightforward. I'm going to sh show you guys one of the easiest one of these professions to start with is burglar. The reason for burglar is you start off with a two plus two bonus to light footed, which is your ability to make less noise when you're moving around, plus two bonus to nimble, which helps you make less noise, I believe to a degree, but it also makes it so you walk faster when you're in combat mode, when you're holding right click to aim your weapon at zombies. That's important because when zombie hordes are chasing you and you're backing up and hitting them and hitting them and hitting them, you don't want them closing the gap on you in between each swing. Nimble helps with that. And sneaking helps you be a little more quiet. That's not that important, but what's really important here is the burglar tag. This burglar tag says you can hotwire vehicles, less chance of breaking the lock of a window. That means when you're forcing open windows to get into houses, which is something you're going to be doing all game, and when you're trying to hotwire vehicles, you don't need to build up skills. Ordinarily in Project Zomboid, to be able to hotwire a vehicle, you need to level your mechanics skill up to level two and your electronics skill up to level one. Instead of taking the burglar trait by picking this, let's say you're like, nah, I really want to be a repairman or a farmer or I'm role playing. I want to be a lumberjack, which is a great class. You can instead just take plus two mechanics in here in your traits and you could take plus one electronics and you'd be able to hotwire as well. This is just the easiest way to do it. So this is what I'm going to recommend. That puts us at a negative six points to spend. Let's take a look through the traits. Let's start at the worst and see what we can deal with. I never say any traits are guaranteed to take it every time. Very underweight used to be one of those because you would get 10 points for it and I think it used to be 12 points and it was very easy to gain weight because you could gain two kilos back every day. Now it's not as easy and this is a crippling start. This is very hard to deal with. I would say underweight's a really good one to start with. It gives you a little less strength, a little less endurance and prone to injury but only a minus one fitness and you're going to be overeating when you start the game. So that's one that I recommend but if you're a brand new player, you might not want to start with it because it does make it a little harder to hop fences and similar things you're going to need to be doing. So what I would recommend as a brand new player for your first character, slow healer, recover slowly from injuries and illness. That's great because in my opinion, it'll teach you how to use the first aid skill better because you'll have to, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but you will have to work on healing yourself for longer, which will get you more used to the muscle memory and mechanics of first aid. That's great. Plus it's virtually a free six points because you really, the whole goal of this game is to not get hit, not to get gobbled up every time you get scratched. The next thing I like to do for a brand brand new player, I would say high thirst, but that's kind of hard to track when you're first starting off. Let's do prone to illness. You're more prone to disease, gives you another four points, more prone to disease, faster rate of zombification. You don't care how fast you zombify. Once you get bitten or scratched or lacerated and you roll those bad percentages, you're dead no matter what. So when you get scratched, you have a 7% chance of being infected with the zombie virus and killed. If you get lacerated, I believe it's a 20 5% chance, but if you get bitten, it's a 100% chance of infection. So this really only hurts you if you're in the winter and you're freezing to death, something like that. And frankly, you're probably going to overheat on accident before you ever do that because you're going to see, ooh, good armor on this, you know, firefighter outfit or something, and you're going to overheat yourself. So I wouldn't worry too much about the prone illness. These are essentially free points if you play well enough to not be getting bitten every few minutes. There are a lot of others on here that are easy to take, and we'll go into that in a deeper in or more in-depth video in the future, but right now I just want to go through this and go over conspicuous, more likely to be spotted by zombies. Ordinarily, I'd pick this because when a zombie looks at you, a lot of people don't know this. They may only do a hearing check every second or so, or every two seconds or something like that to hear if they hear you walking around. But when they're looking at you, they make like 15 checks a second. So even if you only have a 5% chance of being spotted, you're virtually getting spotted every second. So I don't care about getting spotted. That being said, you're a new player. Maybe if you can avoid one zombie spotting you, that's better. I'm trying to go very, this one, higher chance to have food illness, this is actually a free point. And the reason for that is if the only time this will ever come up in your gameplay is if you eat something rotten. It, just don't eat something rotten and this is a free three points for you. Slow reader, people say that's a free set of points on single player. I disagree strongly because it's only two points. And what it does is it's, I think it's a 33% increase in time it takes you to read books. And the problem with that in the early game is that time is everything to you. And so if you spend 33% more time reading 
books versus faster 33% by taking fast reader up above, you're essentially spending 66% more time. It's starting to get close to double the time to read books. And let me tell you, the fastest way to level up skills is reading books. You cannot level up skills well without reading books. I would never take this as a new player. Short-sighted, you could take that. I don't mind taking short-sighted. It's free points if you put glasses on and it doesn't seem to have too much of an effect. It's a small amount of points for a reason. None of these do not take Sunday Driver. Since it's only one point, you might be tempted. Do not, because that means every time you're trying to run over a zombie to get yourself out of a really bad jam, your car actually runs slower. And so you get stopped by zombie bodies faster and they can catch you and pull you through the window and eat you. It's pretty terrible. So these are ones that I would start with as a brand, brand, brand new player. Slow healer, because you really want that practice, that muscle memory working with illnesses I mean injuries prone to illness because you're barely ever gonna get sick just make sure you maintain heat if it's cold stand by a fire if not you know wear a jacket weak stomach don't eat rotten food and short-sighted wear glasses burglar also helps you hotwire vehicles this makes it pretty easy now we have nine points to spend so what I mentioned about getting our strength and fitness as high as possible is a little difficult because we don't have enough points to tank say for example strong or athletic this is mostly because of the fact that I really didn't want you guys to start taking bonus penalties to get really, you know, screwy down here because you really don't know what you're doing. Believe me, when I started this game, I put about 200 hours in always making my strength like a zero and my fitness like a six and saying, oh, I can just work out. Sure. But then it took me like 12 in-game days just to even get a functional strength, which limited me horribly. So I didn't even realize how much I was crippling myself. So I would say at least start with the five. Now, if you wanted to take extra penalties, you could get, you know, strong or athletic. If you're going to pick one or the other, I would pick fitness, raise your fitness because that is way harder to train. And a small known fact is when you're working out to increase your strength, your fitness determines the speed at which you work out. So if you have a higher fitness, it makes it faster to catch your strength up. Whereas if you have a higher strength, it doesn't do anything for your fitness. Plus, I just hate getting tired. That being said, we can stick with our five and five since we don't have the points for it. But again, I recommend when you get more comfortable picking your own personal penalties here, take something like, for example, me, I take high thirst. I'll take that here so I can show you why you want a higher fitness there. Now I can get a nine fitness fitness, which is a huge benefit for me. And that's going to give me a lot more movement speed, attack speed, etc. Now I can't afford strong. That's 10 points. Stout is the next one down. That's six points. If I took a one point and you might be tempted, oh, take Sunday driver. I promise you, you'll die if you do that. I promise you, you will not win. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to start looking at five points. Gymnast, light footed, nimble. That would be good. That's a good point to take, except we already have two points in nimble. Once you get one skill rank in a skill, you virtually get three or four times the EXP you'd normally get. So EXP starts at a 25%. So if the game would give you four EXP for doing an action, you'll only get one EXP if you have no skill rank in there because you only get 25% of the skill allotment. If you take a single point, such as plus one tailoring, you now get plus 75% to that leveling that, of that skill. So you're going up from 25% to 100%, which is four times the EXP. If you want to be good at something, good Lord, take at least a plus one in it because otherwise it's going to take you forever. That being said, books multiply it even more, but the multiplication of the books and your skill points Point, multiply off each other so it's very 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 important that you get a skill point in whatever you want to be now looking through the things do we want gymnast no do we want amateur mechanic no it's a little too specific plus one tailoring plus one sprinting nutritionist lucky light eater needs to eat less regularly we don't want that because well we didn't go underweight did we so maybe we could go light eater save ourselves some trouble but i wouldn't graceful gardening first aid brave less prone to becoming panic that's a very good one that's a very good one makes you less panic because a lot of times when you're fighting zombies you will basically be panicked and you'll do something like 70% less damage with your melee attacks, which is horrible. Wakeful needs less sleep. I would take that. Wakeful is insanely helpful because less sleep that you need means that you can run around and do far more during gameplay and get more things done. And the early game is all about getting things done. You have three more points to go. Outdoorsman's great. It makes it so you never get sick outside. Fast reader is great. It speeds you up on books. Cat's eyes is great for night vision. I'm going to take cat's eyes so it's easier for you to see at night. You I find it hilarious that we're short-sighted, but we're great at seeing at night. This is very helpful for new players. And then, you know, you can just take the one point in Speed Demon because it's better than not. I wouldn't. I would probably play with my points and get something more specific. But let's just try this out as a brand new player build. We'll save it as brand new player. 
and then you can save it down here as a baseline. A lot of times what I like to do is once I get familiar with the negative traits, I will go pick all of the negative traits I'm completely comfortable with, save it as like baseline, and then I will come in load baseline, I'll have a bunch of bonus points, and then every character I want to create, I can just pick whatever I'd like to do. Oh, I want a fisher, I'll pick this, 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 this. Oh, I want a baseball player, I'll pick this, 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 etc. So anyway, let's get ourselves in. That's our first set of tips is talking about don't use mods until you know what you're doing. Start with high strength and fitness if possible. Obviously, we didn't we weren't aggressive enough on the negative traits to get a high strength and fitness, but play with as high of a fitness as you can followed by as high of a strength as you can, because I promise you it will help you survive a lot longer and make it less frustrating to play this game. Just do not do it until you have played this game for way too long. The next thing is in character creation, only pick these traits. I wouldn't even touch high thirst until you're good at the game because sometimes early game it can make you panic a little bit and it's a little hard to do. The reason people think high thirst is easy to take is because you can just carry two water bottles instead of one and essentially you've negated six points worth of penalties. Now that's true but remember every extra water bottle you carry is extra water you carry which is extra weight you carry and weight is a huge part of this game. So I would take this on a new player build. This is the one I would remove. I would remove high thirst and I, I would remove something else you know down here cat's eyes wakeful speed demon I wouldn't pick burglar and I'd pick mechanics something like that but this is a good start for negative traits right here and this is a good start for positive traits right here it lets you see in the dark it lets you sleep less and that those go well together because a lot of times if you take wakeful and you don't have cat's eyes half the time you're trapped inside your house praying for the daytime because you can't see anything outside and it's just not smart to go out there so let's go ahead and start the game and get ourselves going as a new player to get to the rest of our tips we're going to randomize ourselves a couple times one two three four five all right we are christine crosby what is this oh we get to see our walk speed and our run speed spoiler alert you're gonna see this a lot make sure you have shoes i don't care what you look like make sure you have shoes for the love of god you will step on broken glass and you will hate yourself let's get going as we'll go by cc christine crosby we're gonna go over a lot of different things in this game it may be a lot, but just I'll try to put a little tab at the top of the screen for each tip when I say it, because I want you guys to be able to get a hilarious, you know, zombie land style of a book of tips, because you'll really need it. These tips, I'm telling you these tips, I'm going to try to aim these tips at brand, brand, brand new players, because I really want you guys to be able to get into the game and enjoy it. So you can join us on some of our server play. Let's get started. As soon as you start. You guys are going to have to play the tutorial to learn the basic controls. I'm hitting C to crouch because I don't know what's around me. Newspaper. This is how you check different containers. You click over here. Until you find something better than mugs, grab the mugs because you can fill them up with water, okay? We're being desperate here. This is how you play. Frying pan, see how it has a condition? The fact that it has a condition means it's a weapon. So I would attach that to my back so I have a weapon. That puts it on a hot bar down here so I can hit one and I'm instantly wielding it. So if I'm holding right click, I can wield it, left click to swing. If you hold right click and hit space, you'll shove. If you mix these two, you can actually shove faster than you'd normally be able to swing again. So just keep that in mind. Right click on the sink, fill both mugs with water because we know we're high thirst. Right click again, take a drink, might as well get used to it. Empty kettle, cutting board, roasting pan, nothing we need there. Canned food, do not touch canned food early. Just mark it on your map. You need a pen to do that. I will show you in a second. Let's go find a pen. There's going to be a pen somewhere around here. Pens are everywhere. There we go. Pen. Once you have a pen, favorite it. That way, if you ever take everything out of your inventory, it won't go. Hit M to access your map. Look where you are and find some kind of symbol that you know of for food, like say the hamburger, and put it right there. And now you know you have canned food there. That makes it much easier because right now you don't want to be, you're going to be bogged down by weight. I'm going to eat some grapes. Why not? There are mods that will show you your hunger levels and everything down here. You can get those later. Right now, you can look up. Pay attention to your Moodles. This is the way you avoid dying. When something pops up here, put your mouse over it, read it, and see exactly what it ha has. This is pretty straightforward. It's food, and it looks good. It looks happy, and I'm satiated, so I'm not hungry at all. Let's see anything there. Nope, there's a bed. You can sleep on that when you're tired. Fishing Volume 4. Don't touch books that are Volumes 3 or higher early game. I wouldn't even touch books that are Volumes 2 or higher earlier because you're not going to need them. Your books take so long to read and you can't read them until... Books are on a scale, so hit H to access your health. That's the easiest way to access this menu. You can move this anywhere you'd like. Click on Skills. If you look here, every two levels is one level of book. So you can see there's 10 levels of a skill. So 
if you find a book that says Carpentry Book 1, it will help you get EXP boost for Carpentry 1 and 2. Carpentry 2 gets 3 and 4. Carpentry 3 gets four, 5 and 6. Carpentry 4 gets 7 and 8. Carpentry 5 gives you 9 and 10. There's only 5 books for each one, and so each book does 2 levels. You need those books for EXP. Here's your info. Check all your traits, your weight. You want to keep your weight between 75 and 85. That's generally right in the middle. Here's your class. Here's all of your skills and any EXP penalties or bonuses you have should be shown on here. But yeah, EXP boost 125%. EXP boost 100%. See this one's 0%. So that 100% boost is huge. I'm essentially getting five times the EXP I would normally get for those skills. Let's see what's in here. Here's another way to pull it up. If you can't click for some reason, if it's like bugging out like this, you can instead highlight up here, click to look. Hand torch, that's always good to have a flashlight. If you hit F, you will automatically pull out a flashlight. I don't know why the game doesn't tell you that, but they don't. So, sewing kit. If you highlight, see how there's nothing, no pictures? And then you look at the bottom below encumbrance reduction there, it shows you two pictures. A good thing to do is drop this on the ground and then click on it to look at it. Needle and thread, that is great for when you're working on your clothing. And the way you do that is through your inventory, you can right click on say jeans and say inspect. And now that I'm here, I can right click on groin and with tailoring fabric, needle and thread required for clothing repair. I can repair my clothes, I can patch them up and I can make it actually harder to bite me and scratch me through my clothing. Something that is kind of a higher level tip, but let's get ourselves going. So we look around by zooming way out and you can hold aim to zoom further. We can see there's houses with big fences up here. Houses with small fences down here. We can see a whole bunch of zombies down that way. So let's just get ourselves out of the house. Take a look at what's around. Keep in mind, you're in, I'm in apocalypse mode, so I'm going to have to be doing a lot more running than most people. Now, if you back up while holding right click, you will build up your nimble skill, jump over the fence, and hit them as soon as you can to get them to stay still once they jump over a fence after you. Highlight their body, look at what they have. It, highlight all this stuff because if you have clothes that have better bite or scratch resistance than your clothing, they'll show up with a little plus next to these. I'm already wearing jeans and shoes, so it won't really show any tips, but there's a zombie over there. We're being quiet, that's why we're creeping. Take a peek in the window. This is another tip I'll give you guys early. Take a peek in the window before you try the door, then try the window. This is dangerous because we're going in after only peeking in one window, but frankly, we'll take it. This is a TV. Anytime you see a TV, click on it, turn it on, turn the volume down immediately, and put it on life and living TV. The first seven days of the game, you will be getting free EXP level ups at six o'clock in the morning, which we don't have a clock yet, but we'll get one eventually, 12 o'clock noon, and 6 p.m. You will be getting free skill level ups in very important skills, carpentry, cooking, that sort of thing. Nothing here we can read, so we're not gonna take anything here because weight is not our friend. Herbalist, see how it says unread? Read it immediately. This gives us herbal remedies. It may not be great in your mind, but it will be something we can read and then throw away to save our weight. It may be only 0.1, but believe me, anybody in the military knows ounces turn to pounds and pounds turn to a miserable experience, so just, Toss this after you read it. If you're in single player, especially. If you're trying to build up a horde, whatever, you can get to that later. But now it says already read. We get rid of it, and now we keep searching. More white mug, red mug. Books make you happy if you get miserable, which will probably happen if I keep going so slow. Now see, see how I'm looking inside of this barrier, this little cupboard, but you can tell there's stuff on top of it? If that's the case, hit the floor icon to look at what's on top of it, and you'll find things like a saucepan. For example, I'll well, this is uncooked. Watch this. There's the stove. Here's a saucepan. Drag the saucepan to the stove. We will move the saucepan over to the stove. And now that it's in there, click on the stove. We can turn it on. And you can highlight this to see. And eventually a cooking line will pop up and show you when it's almost cooked. There we go. There's the cooking. There's another line that goes the opposite direction for frozen. You can watch this. My tip is just do not try to multitask. Just sit here and stare while it cooks. You know why? Because if you look away, you will burn the entire house down and then that fire will spread and you will start an anti smoky the Bear forest fire faster than you can blink. Now, when this gets towards the end, see how the little ticks it's going to be like one more tick. Turn off early. It'll keep cooking and then take it out of the oven so it stops cooking. 
Now we come down here to listen to this carpentry lesson. And if you hit H again and look at our skills, carpentry right here has zero EXP. As we watch this class, we will get EXP in our carpentry skill. See, we just got some. 25. And if we'd read a book, we'd be getting three times more because when you finish a book for your skill, for those levels, you'll get massive, massive skill multipliers. But it's good to get free skills, so pay attention to the TV whenever you can. The first seven days of the game, you should just hunker around near TVs every chance you get. Go house to house looting for things, but hunker around near TVs and try to protect yourself. There are certain tools you want to look for. I'm gonna give you a big tip while we're stuck here listening to this TV show. The basic tools list that I always try to find on every character is a screwdriver for electronics, a hammer of some kind for carpentry, a pipe wrench for plumbing, a shovel for burying bodies if you start building up a house. I would ditch the shovel before any of the other tools though, if possible, just because of the weight. A saw to help you with carpentry and sawing logs, a wrench for mechanics and other house stuff, and an ax for cutting trees, as well as a backpack to carry stuff, fanny packs for extra carrying stuff, and good boots or shoes for stomping zombie heads. Because I'm telling you, early game, you're going to be stomping zombie heads more than you're doing some epic battle with a firearm or something. You really have to play poverty mode. So, if you look, this says 720 calories. That's really good early game. You can see we don't have a Moodle about our hunger up here. That would be something really good to eat when we wake up or when we get rolling. Let's just keep looking. We don't want to get too crazy. Another frying pan. I will grab that because it's our only source of weaponry right now, right? And what I like to do is I will equip this on my primary weapon because then my other one goes to my quick slot. So if I'm in the middle of a fight and this weapon breaks, I can just hit number one and switch which frying pan I'm using. Now this pasta, freshly cooked, I'm just gonna eat it. Looks like it makes me unhappy because, I don't know. Now I have another weapon. There we go. We've got a saucepan. We've got two frying pans. We're like a kitchen killer. Feeling sad? That's because I took the minus 22 unhappiness by eating that. Another saucepan. Okay, I'm taking it. Call me crazy, but I'm taking it until we find actual weapons somewhere. Bacon, carrots, pickles. I like things like pickles. They don't degrade. That's good. Let's go check this room. Always have your weapon up. Now another tip is if you're opening a door and you don't know what's in it, open it hit shift and run through because if you do that what will happen is you will shoulder check any zombies there and you will shove your way past them as opposed to them lunging at you and you hoping you can time your swing to get them now here's another tip i have for you we just cleared this house but there's a little bit of food here again a little bit of food where's our little hamburger there it is there's a little bit of food in there there's no books there's nothing else you want here so Let's go sneaking outside. Let's pick a fight so I can show you guys the basic mechanics of fighting. You want to utilize barriers such as fences to handle most of the zombies. I like to walk because then you can outwalk any zombie. When you hit a zombie, hold, sh hold your right click and back away. If they get a little too close to you, just keep backing off. So you can separate them, so you're not hitting them both at the same time. That zombie's freaking out. He's... Oh boy, he's... Stop that, mister. You can come over here and save your weapons by stomping on his head with space. You can also force yourself... To, see, I'm normally swinging at the air. You can force yourself to hit the ground by holding left alt. That's really important if you're trying to knock a guy out before his friend comes along. So now, let's keep going. We're having a really easy time. I'm used to playing with, like times 16 population so this is this has turned out to be much easier for me there we go there's a the sound there's somebody breaking through oh that's a couple of them oh that's not good all right let's go over the barrier so they jump over the fence and it slows them down whoa that's a lunge they will do that if you're anywhere near the fence when they get over and that makes things troublesome for you because it, it can really they can actually knock you down with that lunge here's a tip swing and spam space and you'll actually attack faster than you can if you just swing let's let's do the the classic circle and just see how many of these we can beat up with these weapons just the classic circle check where you're going okay make sure you're not getting surrounded knocking them down is your ultimate move early game get out of my way hold the alt to hit the guy on the ground to get him out of here get you off me get you off me I don't know why I hit space there a couple times, but it kind of 
lagged out, check your surroundings, make sure you're not getting bitten, because we look like the worst dressed person in the world for the zombie apocalypse. We don't even have a t-shirt. Baseball caps, socks, briefs, cologne, tank top. Okay, looks like we cleared out these zombies pretty good. Let's go check out what house they were guarding. Let's go see what's in there, and just go slow, 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 house by house. Now this, remove broken glass, do not do this unless you have a weapon in your hand because you will cut your hands open and bleed everywhere. Now, another thing, always check tool sheds. If you can't get in here, that's really sad. This is why you want a hammer and a screwdriver because you could disassemble this door to get in here. Tool sheds are your best friend early game. They usually have metal pipes and similar things. Remember, turn on the TV, switch it to life and living, turn it on, volume down, and tune in. Now it says life and living volume one, so now you know when the next class comes on, it'll alert you. Open the door, check. Bandage. Oh, there's a bandage. We can grab that. That's e that's free. Let's fill our empty mugs. And let's drink. Another thing you can do a lot of times is rip up your shirts. So I could right-click on socks and rip clothing. And this will give you basically bandages. That's the cheapest way to get bandages. Look on the ground. We see something. Bourbon and chips. Okay. We like the way this person parties. Now we have some calories to go. We have some calories to go and a way to sleep if we need. You can use alcohol to make yourself go to sleep if you're in pain from working out or something similar. Fresh zucchini. Let's eat it while it's here. I like to eat fresh foods first and leave all of the canned foods for later when, you know, the power goes off. Spoiler alert, but power is going to go off. Two saucepans. Man, we're the kitchen warrior up in here. See, these have no expiration date. They're not fresh, nothing like that. So you can just leave them here. Most people grab them and then get overburdened. Look at, see how there's nothing on the stove? We'll click on the floor. Pasta, fresh, uncooked. Something's on the ground here. So let's check the ground again. Ground, cigarettes, pop, white wine. Okay, so this is a big food area. Let's check the door. All right, this is a safe house to make your base because if you close this door, there's no way for zombies to break in a window while you're sleeping. Check what's on the bed, clothing, okay. Let's actually dress ourselves. Let's wear that. And then what we can do is we can rip... Oh, wait. Are we wearing the bandeau? No, let's rip that. Actually, what we can do is turn it to... Nah, eh, I don't want to show you guys sheet ropes just yet. When we get a second story building, I'll show you. But now we're wearing a t-shirt. Now we have some ripped sheets, which work as bandages. They're not the greatest, but take a look at all this. Magical Wonderland or Woodland. Trapping 4, we don't need that. Newspaper, Magazine, Fishing, Volume 1. This is something I would consider reading if we really cared about fishing. So let's go ahead and read. Let's actually move ourselves close enough. Well, let's explore the house before we start getting crazy with reading. What's all this? Denim jeans, pillow, standard bra, black fills, frills, notebook hoodie. There we go. Scratch defense. Let's wear that hood down. Let's wear it hood up. Then when we put a hat on, it'll make us look goofy. Cool. Alright, we're good to go. So, let's go over here by the TV. Let's start reading the book. And you'll see, I'm going to hit a single player button. This does not exist in multiplayer, but this button right here is speed up time until you finish your current activity. It's a good thing to do, but you really have to listen to zombies, because if they start banging on the door, you need to stop. Let's try it out now and watch what happens. See, fishing says no EXP bonus. Watch what happens when we finish this book, or as we're going. The multiplier goes up. It starts off at a reduction multiplier, right? 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.9. But eventually, see, we just got fishing EXP. Isn't that crazy? From the TV show. Now we're getting a 1.5 times multiplier. Now we're getting a 1.8 times multiplier. Oh, oh, and that's why we listen. There we go. The surprising zombie just broke through a window. How dare you, sir. I would have invited you in for lunch. You didn't even ask. Key. Drag these to your key ring. You will automatically use them. Digital watch. Right click. Hit wear on whatever wrist you're comfortable with. It will give you the time. This is important. This is how you track the TV show that you're following. Let's take a look around. We are thirsty, feeling sad, and could eat. Let's handle that now. Let's go to floor. Get the pasta. Put it in the oven. Turn the oven on while we put the pasta in there. There we go. Now there's pasta in there. And remember, I'm going to drink just because I'm here. 
and then fill the mug, fill the empty white mug. But keep your eye on this food. You do not want to burn down one of your early houses. That is pain you do not want. And as soon as this pasta pops out, we're going to eat it. Get ourselves going. And remember, this is Apocalypse difficulty. You're going to find it a little easier. If there are any things that I confuse you with how I did it, because I played this game a thousand hours. So if I turn off the oven, take it when it's cooked off the oven so it stops burning. See, it continues to burn because it's in there. And then that says unhappiness pasta. Why on earth is there so much unhappiness with pasta? My goodness. All right, we're not going to eat the pasta. We're sick of this. Get on the ground. Forget you, pasta. We don't like you. You're too hot. We're going to instead go into the fridge, look in the freezer, see if there's anything else we can cook. Let's get a meat patty. Let's go cook that. Turn on, drag the meat patty over there into the stove, and let's watch it cook. What is with this pasta being so unhappy? Better hot. Wow. Apparently, they're anti-Italian in this game, but... One thing you want to do, we'll continue reading the book while we're here. I like to min-max because I do this all the time, but keep your eye on the cooking. You really want to. The first time I burned down a house drove me crazy because I had no idea why it happened. But you need to keep an eye on this stuff. Some people focus a little too much. They hear the cooking show on the TV and they think, oh, you know, they're giving me specifics like, you know, cook food for this long on this temperature. Don't pay attention to that. Just cook it and watch it cook and pull it out as you pull it out. And you can cook multiple things. If you really want to be efficient, you can go to your freezer here and drag these over there and cook them as well. But right now, we're going to play just the basics. I'm just going to give you guys a showing of every single style. Also, when you're reading, hold right-click, and you can spin around to see if any zombies are coming behind you. This is a good tip to keep your eyes open. Even though you want to stare at the oven and make sure it's cooking right, you really just want to keep your eyes spinning all the time. Because you can hear zombies coming up behind you sometimes, but a lot of times it'll scare the bejesus out of you, and you won't survive because of it. Especially as a new player, you'll panic. Just remember, when in doubt, hold shift because you will run through people and shoulder check them and basically that's one of the only ways to get yourself out of getting bitten if you get surprised is to shoulder check the zombie and knock them over. It's one of the biggest ways to save yourself. Now that we're on our last tick, I'll turn it off preemptively. It'll keep cooking and then I'll take this patty. Okay, I guess since I'm reading, I can't. So I hit escape to cancel. Now I will eat this meat patty because hopefully it'll make me a little happier and get rid of this peckish moodle feeling a little sad so a good way to raise your mood is to find something that gives you minus unhappiness like a book you come over here find a regular book crossword magazine none of these have happiness you'll notice just boredom and stress so we need to find something that's an actual book but there's another answer pop minus 10 unhappiness everybody knows a good mountain dew fixes your happiness now make sure you toss the pop can Look at that, white wine, unhappiness minus 20. We could drink that if we needed more, but we don't have a Moodle. So now it's 10 p.m. So what we're going to do is we're going to assume we're getting pretty tired because we've been up since, what, 6 a.m.? Let's open the door with E. You hear the zombies creeping around over here? You hear that? You can hear them creeping around out there. But since we're hidden in a room where there's no windows, I'm less concerned. So I'm fine right-clicking on this bed and saying sleep. And then you have to listen. So what I want to do is I want to wake up at 5, say 30 in the morning. So I will go to my watch here, right-click, say set alarm. We don't need as much sleep as most people, right? Because we took that trait. So we could actually sleep for, say, 6 hours and wake up at like 4. So let's instead wake up at 4.40 with the alarm. Let's take a nap and see what happens. Now listen carefully. Listen, we don't hear any zombies. We woke up at 1.40. So we apparently don't need that much sleep. Now, right click, set alarm, turn off your alarm. You do not want that randomly going off while you're creeping around. You have to remember these things. Double check yourself, make sure you got a weapon, you got a flashlight, you're good to go, hold up your weapon, and let's check out the house. Make sure we didn't get broken into in the meantime. Alright. We've got the lights. We still have a couple hours until the TV comes on. Let's go explore our area and clear it out a little. 
shut the door behind us with E. There's a zombie up there. Let's make sure. Here's another tip. When you're coming around a corner, don't stand near the corner. Walk away from the corner. Oh, hi. Wow. Wow. Run. I don't want to get lunged at. <laughs> that lunge can... That lunge has killed more characters of mine than anything else. Go away. All right, let's look around, see if we're still good. Clear everything out. Yep. See, this is because why we have cat's eyes. So we can actually see at night. Otherwise, this would be pitch black and it would be miserable. Let's loot. There's a jacket. That has a hole in it, though. See how it has a hole? Inspect it, and you can look. Say, mmm, this has a hole in the lower torso, because it's give so it's given me 0% bite and 0% scratch resistance. So I'm not going to take that jacket. Ordinarily, I would say go ahead and take that jacket and wear it. You can, but see that run speed modifier is 0.95? I like to go fast. I don't like this crap. So I, I will wait for a better jacket, frankly. Oh, there's a little horde over there. There's a little guy over here. Let's go eliminate this guy to slowly just whittle our nearby enemies down. You stay there. Let's look this way. Uh, nothing good. Okay. Now, if we had a hammer and screwdriver, we could start tearing this stuff up, but we don't. So, I'm not too concerned about this character's survival. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this house and I'm going to keep looting. This is a little aggressive. I wouldn't do this in a normal game at 2.40 in the morning when I can't see. Turn on my flashlight with F. Walk around so I can see. Lights don't seem to attract zombies. But my noise does. Get ready to shove him as soon as he lands so he falls. What are you? Fall. Stay there. Turn around make sure nothing else. Okay. Oh, I hear somebody. There he is. Hi, buddy. Try to shove them as soon as they're coming over. Like that. Because it'll make them fall on the ground without lunging. If you shove them when they're jumping over the fence, it'll knock them down and they basically get stuck. It's kind of good. Makes sense. I mean, if I was jumping a fence and somebody shoved me, I'd probably end up on my face, too. Let's peek in the window. Now, this is what I normally do when I find a house. Unless I'm surrounded by hordes, I will peek in every window and make sure there's nothing in there first. Okay. Aha! What did I say about tool sheds? They're our best friends. Let's peek in this last window. Okay, it looks like a relatively safe house. Don't walk around the corner close to it. There might be a zombie right there. You never know. Okay, looks good. So now, oh, well, there's our friend. Hi, pal. We're going to frying pan you. Wow. Wow. Nope, don't lunge at me. Don't you do it. See, I knew you were going to. So rude. Ugh. House guests. They're not what they used to. Let's check around this thing for a window. Okay, no window, so let's pray this door is open, because if it's not, we're stuck again. Excellent. Close the door behind you. Take a look at these shelves. Extinguisher, electric wire, nothing useful there. Extinguisher, oh, metal bar, metal pipe. Here we go. Attached to our back. Equip primary. We've got some actual metal now. So now, we don't have to use these frying pans as weapons. We can just carry them around, or toss them, or whatever. Saucepans, frying pans, all of them are kind of the same sort of thing. I don't really need them. Frying pans are a little heavier, so I would rather use the saucepans. The damage seems about the same, so we'll just, well, we'll put them in the kitchen so we don't confuse ourselves, but let's go get in this house, start reading our fishing book. If it has a TV, remember, we're looking for 6 o'clock for our time to get the first class of the day. You better open. I'm muscular. Let's go. See, this is where a 9 strength would help you out a lot. You'd be able to force this open a lot more easily with a higher strength. Anytime there's a furniture near a window, it doesn't actually block anybody. Click on the TV. Now, here's a tip I'll give you. See how the TV's right by the wall? It might attract zombies in if it turns on. Go to this button here. You pick up. Pick up the TV. Walk it to the center of your house or wherever you'd feel safer having it and hit tab to switch this to place and set it down right here. Then you turn it on. So click on it. Turn on, turn it down to volume one, tune into Life and Living TV. There you go. 
makes it easier for you. We have already checked this place out. Now look, here is a window, right? If you tap E here, you'll open the window. If you hold shift and tap E, you'll close the blinds. That's always a good move. I love closing blinds if we have them. Do they have blinds on this one? No, they don't. Blinds here? No. But over here they do. No, they don't. Interesting. Thought they did. Nothing good in there. A lot of times what I'll do too here... What? Alarm is set for 22... Whoa, so we need to turn that off. See, because otherwise that alarm would have randomly gone off and attracted zombies to us. Yeah, we need that off. So, now, you can right-click here and remove these curtains, and I'm going to show you why. So, we don't have enough curtains in this house to cover up every window, correct? So what we're doing is we're... Shutting off this light over here, too. We're making it dark so it doesn't attract zombies. We shut that door and never go in there again. And then out here, we add a sheet because we just took that curtain and then hit shift E to close it so zombies don't see us from out there. Come in here, check out this room. It's a bathroom. Perfume, let's uh, fill our mugs with water. Drink some water to get rid of that thirst. Check here, just perfume. There's a zombie in here? What the, shotgun? Okay, and a rifle? Okay. No round in the chamber. Racket. Let's attach that to our back. This is where people will die early game. They will find a shotgun, and they will think it's the bee's knees, and they will get murdered. Let me tell you right now, do not grab this rifle. We are already overburdened. We need to start cutting things down. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish reading this fishing book. Hit E to shut the door. Speed it up to finish the book. Watch our moodles. See, heavy load, carrying too much. That'll screw you up. That cooking class was very good that I could get that from here. Let's finish reading so we get the full 3%. We're getting EXP for cooking. There we go. Now we can drop, we can just drop the book. We don't care about that book because it's extra weight. Empty mug, frying pans. We can start putting frying pans away because we don't want them because they're extra weight. See, that's an extra 2 kilos. Now we're underburdened. That's good. Because now if we eat food and we get overfed, there's a griddle pan we could use, but see that condition is bad. Now if we eat enough food, hunger minus 16, if we eat enough food to get ourselves full, this will raise our strength by 2, or our carrying capacity, see up to 14. That helps a lot early game if you're really carrying like one last thing that you need to hang on to for some reason. Not something I recommend. Again, fresh cooked mutton chop? I mean, while we're here, I mean, nobody says no to a good mutton chop. And again, this house just... Oh, it has a rolling pin. That's another good weapon. A little heavy for us. We don't need the extra weight. But, oh. Let's equip this in both hands. Now that we have it, hit R to try to reload, which we don't have the shotgun shells open, so let's open that. Now let's hit R. We'll be reloading our shotgun here. You can right-click it, and you can say rack, but it usually racks on its own. But see, with a shotgun, since it racked on its own when I reloaded, see how it says 5 plus 1, total of 6? You can insert one extra. If you're a shooter, like I am, you really can slide one extra round in that chamber and have your magazine loaded with whatever you have. You know, most of these are, you know, auto-feed shotguns underneath. You can just pop an extra round in there once you have one in the chamber. But if you're not ready to use it, immediately do this. Unequip. <laughs> And then equip back either the metal bar or the metal pipe. I like to beat on people with a metal pipe, so I will hit them with this. It lowers the weight once you're carrying it. Now, if you could attach this to your hip, I would, but you can't, unfortunately, because it's too big. So that's the big thing weighing us down now. Let's drop off our saucepans. So we're not holding that weight either. And now see we're whittling down our weight here to make sure we're good to go. We have a shotgun for emergencies. Some extra shells, just in case. Mug of water, they're both empty now. There we go. All right, good to go. We heard our class, so now what I like to think of it as is, ooh, magazine, Hunter Magazine, unread. Teaches us a little trick about making stick traps and wooden box traps. Always read them and then ditch them. Same thing with city maps. Something you really wanna do. So remember, let's go back over the basic tool list. Screwdriver for electronics, hammer for carpentry, pipe wrench for plumbing, shovel for burying bodies, saw for carpentry and sawing logs, a wrench for mechanics and some house stuff, and an axe for cutting trees. Find yourself a backpack, which I still haven't done, for some kind of carrying capacity because what backpacks and, and containers do is they reduce the effective weight 
of whatever you're carrying. So I could carry 11 kilos of stuff, put 10 kilos of that in the backpack, and it would only be counted as two kilos. A huge multiplier in terms of what you can carry. All right, guys, that's a good point for us to take a break on Project Zomboid episode number one. Here's our recap. Tip number one, do not play with mods until you're far more experienced in at least the basics. Tip number two, make sure both fitness and strength are high on your early characters. Tip number three, take burglar as a profession for a new player. You can also, once you get a little more advanced, just level up two ranks of mechanics and one in electrical. Tip number four, starting negative traits that are easy to work with are slow healer, prone to illness, weak stomach, short-sighted. Feel free after your first couple playthroughs to be creative with this and come up with more to get yourself more advantages, but be cautious originally. Tip number five, do not touch canned food early, just mark it on your map. Tip six, pay attention to your Moodles. They will dictate your early game success or failure. Tip number seven, don't touch books early game that are out of your level range. Just leave them. They're extra weight, they'll get you killed. Tip number eight, take a peek in windows before you try the door. Tip number nine, first seven days of the game, turn on TVs to life and living. Get free skills at six o'clock, 12 o'clock, and 6 p.m. Tip number 10, the basic tools list I have listed here for you. Screwdriver, hammer, pipe wrench, shovel, saw, wrench, and axe. Tip number 11, running through doors with shift is safer than backpedaling. You'll shoulder check zombies and protect yourself from a bite. Tip number 12, abuse the in-game map for navigation and for marking where resources are. And tip number 13, don't walk near corners. I'll see you guys on the next one, but make sure you drop comments down below letting me know if you like this format. I try to keep it as small on the editing frame as possible. I didn't really want people to be annoyed by massive amounts of cuts and edits. This is just sort of a play with me, so let me know if there's anything I can shift around to make it more enjoyable to watch. Otherwise, make sure you scribble these tips down and we will start adding the tips in the next one. See you then.